uh, a large sleepless population on the earth. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey, again, our time is almost up. You, uh, if you got any books, uh, your website again, uh, and how they can find you on Facebook, go ahead and plug it. Okay. Well, the uh, website is brumac.mysite.com, B-R-U-M-A-C dot M-Y-S-I-T-E dot C-O-M. Uh, my email address is B-R-U-M-A-C at CompuServe. C O M P U S E R V E dot com. And <clears throat> you can uh, look up on Amazon my books. I got four books, uh, which are out there right now. Uh, the FBI CIA UFO Connection, uh, which is a, essentially, essentially a history book, but it's a history that you didn't know happened. Uh, and it also describes my direct experiences with the CIA. Then there's a book called Abduction in My Family, which is a novel, unique book. It's a novel with a fact book built into it. By the time you finish this book, you'll be pretty well educated in the whole subject, history-wise and physics-wise and sightings and all sorts of stuff. Then uh, there's Three Minutes in June, uh, the UFO sighting that changed the world. That's the most detailed analysis of the Kenneth Arnold sighting that you can get. Uh, I was surprised when I started analyzing the, the Kenneth Arnold sighting. I decided to do a book on it because although it was the first sighting and is iconic, uh, lending the name, the generation of the name Flying Saucers came from that sighting. There wasn't any really big detailed analysis of it that had been published. No book on the subject. Every book, virtually every UFO book mentioned the sighting, but hardly any of them went into any depth on it. So I decided to write a whole book on that one sighting and concluded that if you really understood the Kenneth Harrell sighting, you understood a large portion of uh, ufology. Then, uh, most recently, I have a book out called 19, the the legacy of 1952, the year of the UFO, and uh, 50, 50, 65 years, 60, 60, 65 years ago, or 60, 67 years ago, um, at this week, we were living through the uh, uh, flood of UFO sightings that, was, that occurred in the summer of 1952. From June through August, they had more sightings than they had during a, a, a comparable period of time in any other year. And it was important because uh, it had included the sightings over the Washington, D.C. area on two weekends, and that forced the Air Force to have a press conference that was run by General John A. Sanford, the Director of Air Force Intelligence, and... Uh, it sort of established the policy of the Air Force that um, didn't matter what sighting you're talking about. It was explainable as a hoax, misidentification, or uh, a hoax or a misidentification or delusional, some, something of a delusional character. Uh, and General Sanford when asked about what, what caused the radar targets that appeared to be over the capital area, he referred to a uh, temperature inversion effect that bends radio beams downwards onto the ground. And uh, so the newspapers the next year, day said that these sightings are all hot air. I wouldn't doubt it. Hey, our time is up, Bruce. I, I want to thank you for coming on, my friend. Say hi to your wife for me. And uh, yeah. maybe we'll get you back on in a couple months again. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, Bruce. Knows, maybe maybe we just close you by that time. I hope so. <laughs> you take care, my friend. Okay, you too. Okay, night. Night. So make sure you go out and uh, go to Amazon. Uh, type in uh, Bruce McAbee. Check out his books. Go to his website. If you want to learn the difference between orbs and things like that, According to Bruce, he has, you know, information that'll explain all that stuff. 
Well, tomorrow we'll be back on Night Dreams Talk Radio after dark at 8 to 9 tomorrow. I want to thank everybody, you know, for listening in tonight. I want you, if you like the show, do me a favor. Tell your friends, not just on Facebook. Tell your friends to tune in to www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on TuneIn. You can find us virtually everywhere. Plus a few stations yet are still carrying us. Hopefully each day I'm getting a little bit stronger. I think you can hear it in my voice. And, you know, like always, Bruce gave a lot of information tonight. I think we got more information from him than he's given on a lot of shows. Uh, He was, you know, it was interesting here tonight. Anyway, everybody, you have a great one. We'll catch you tomorrow. If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and thank you.